doing enough to help people with AIDS. You'll find out today on AIDS Vision when we look at Hollywood and the entertainment industry's commitment to life. Hi, welcome to AIDS Vision. I'm your volunteer host, Alison Arngram. And today we're going to be talking about Hollywood and AIDS. And with us is Kimberly Richards, who is a client of AIDS Project Los Angeles, and David Michaels, who is the West Coast Chair for the Ribbon Project, who are the people who have brought us these. Welcome to AIDS Vision. Thank you. Uh, David, I think the first thing people really want to know is, what is the Ribbon Project? We see the ribbons. What is it? The Ribbon Project is basically an awareness project, um, as I'm, I don't have to tell you that uh, we need to make the country aware that we have a major problem here, and I know that that might sound even strange to people in L.A. or New York, but um, it started basically in New York, um, three organizations, Equity Fights AIDS, uh, Broadway Cares, and an, a group called Visual AIDS, which is uh, made up of artists and painter-type artists. And they came together, and they, they, so they premiered this, as it were, on the Tony Awards. Uh, and, you know, networks can be a little funny about talking about AIDS. Um, and so they were told not to say anything, and so nobody said anything. So everyone was wearing these red ribbons on the Tony Awards. And what it managed to do was arouse curiosity, because nobody really knew what it was about. And uh, I came to New York uh, shortly after that because I lost uh, my best friend. And um, at the same time, I was also there for the Daytime Emmy Awards because I was nominated and I was the, uh, the vice chair of the event. And I went to Larry Kurtz's memorial service. Um, and again, everybody was wearing the red ribbons and it was driving me crazy. And I knew it had something to do with something good. But I, you know, um, so I made some phone calls and it turned out that um, indeed it was the AIDS Ribbon Project. And um, the, you know, they say everything happens for a reason. Um, they were looking for a way to infiltrate the daytime Emmys. And, there I was. You were the guy for the daytime movies. It's interesting, yeah. that's true, that the, when they first went on, no one said anything. And I still know people who've seen it, and if they didn't see the one moment, say, right. during the Emmys where someone mentioned it. Right. Uh, do you think the air of mystery up until now has helped, actually, in a way? Up until then, I think it did. It was just like, what is this? What is this? What is this? <laughs> we want but, one. What yeah. is it? <laughs> but we went in to do the daytime Emmys, and again, the network said, we don't want anything said about this. And at that point, I just said, yeah, fine. And we went to five people, Susan Simons, um, who's um, my co-chair, and I. We, we went to Joan Rivers and Sally Jesse Raphael and um, some of the soap actors and, and Ed Asner. And I said, whoever gets on camera first, please say something. But only one of you, because otherwise, if you all start saying things, we're going to be doing what they're afraid we were going to be doing. But the, and, the ribbon itself does not imply membership no. in a specific organization. No, not at all. The, the ribbon basically means that I am in support of people living with AIDS and the people who are helping to care for them. That's all. Uh, that's all that it means. There's nothing radical here. There's nothing, um, <laughs> there's nothing scary. There's nothing, uh, it, that's all. I mean, uh, and Ed Asner was good enough to announce this to the world on the daytime Emmys. He's, he's a wonderful man. He's so, as, as gruff as he seems, that's how gentle and sensitive he is to all of this. And he did tell America what it was about. And uh, then they said, okay, now you can do the primetime Emmys. <laughs> and I said, sure, I can. Oh, you passed inspection, so you yeah, made it to the so. primetime yeah. Emmys. So off we went to the primetime Emmys, which was a much bigger um, uh, thing to crack, um, but with the cooperation of a lot of wonderful people, a man named Michael Levitt, who was uh, the talent person, and an actress named Shelley Herman, who basically just went and slammed them onto people. And she, she, she was Where this or else? <laughs> right. She was, um, 
And so at the primetime Emmys, I, I, if you saw, I would say like 96% of the people on stage were wearing them. And the thing that kind of warmed my heart the most was uh, anyone who wasn't wearing one looked out of place. And, and that kind of was wonderful. Well, I think yeah. a few people yeah. I saw who weren't wearing them, it's, they were already wearing a red dress and it wouldn't show. I mean, that was really what it got down yeah. to. Yeah, well, Betty White came running up after the Emmys and, and apologized for having chosen a red dress because she was afraid people would think she wasn't wearing a ribbon. You know? <laughs> I said, everybody knows where you're we, coming we from. We saw yeah. it, Betty. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, Kimberly, um, with all this oh, heightened awareness, you've been doing a lot to raise awareness of the issue of AIDS and especially of Trying. women with HIV. Tell me about some of the things that you've been doing. Um, my daughter and I, my daughter's infected as well. Um, we did a telethon for Children's Hospital Los Angeles and I've done some articles for uh, local newspapers and um, American Health uh, is doing an article on women with HIV and I, I'm in that. and. Uh, just whoever calls and, and wants me to do something, I, I get out there and do it. Well, we got you on AIDS vision, yeah. so <laughs> glad you could come here. Um, how do you feel about this resistance? I mean, as you said, this, this red ribbon didn't signify anything more significant than simply, I support people who are fighting AIDS. How do you feel about this resistance that there were people saying, well, I'm not sure I should wear the ribbon, that we should let you say this on television? It's not surprising to me at all. Uh, I, it doesn't surprise me to hear that, 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 you know, I know there's a lot of fear and uh, uh, networks would be afraid of, of bad publicity and, and things like that. And I know there's people have major opinions about age, AIDS and uh, uh, they're, they're very strong opinions and, and often very conflicting, uninformed opinions. So I know that uh, there's a lot of tension that uh, gets get stirred up whenever you talk about it. What resistance did you get? Were there any specific instances of, no, I cannot wear the ribbon, and did anyone give a, a rationale? Anybody who said no, and I, we can really count them uh, on our fingers, uh, did not give a reason. Um, um, one person mentioned something about being Catholic, which I didn't quite understand is why that meant not to wear an AIDS ribbon, but we, 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 we did not get aggressive and we didn't want to force anybody to do it. We wanted people to do this voluntarily. Uh, and uh, so the, the handful of people who didn't wear them, we just kind of let that go and um, we secretly hate them now. <laughs> you know, and, that's interesting. You know, I, I would think if you were Catholic, you'd wear two. I don't that's know. What I just would think. Did, did. In fact, uh, Burt Reynolds wore two because Lonnie's dress was too low and so he wore one for her. So. <laughs> now, there's a guy. Okay, that, yeah. there's a gentlemanly thing to do. Yeah. Um, now, of course, the other end of the spectrum, of course, is AIDS Project Los Angeles Commitment to Life Awards. Yes. Where the celebrities who come there come there specifically in support of people with AIDS, such as Bette Midler and, and mm -hmm. Carol Channing and everyone was there. Um, they, of course, were heavily bereaved. Yeah. Um, what was that like being at that? It was incredible. First of all, when you walked in, um, I'm sure you're going to agree with me, uh, Kimberly, uh, all the celebrity, the star ushers were wearing them. And so any place you went to get into the theater, there were the red ribbons. And that to me, that, that really, for some, it was very moving to me. I mean, that all these, these faces you see on television were greeting people and wearing the ribbons. And there's something... And you, I guess you know this, Allison. Celebrities have a power that maybe they should or shouldn't have. But if somebody likes somebody because they are they were on their favorite show or um, they are on their favorite show, they listen to them. And so, therefore, Betty White can say the same words as I say, and they mean more to the general public because it's Betty White who they love and adore. So. Um, so since celebrities have this power, whether they should or not, I think it's wonderful that they're using it in this direction. Because again, in, in a lot of the country, AIDS seems to be a thing that you hear about that could never happen to me, uh, that um, is strange and scary. I mean, uh, to a lot of people, I mean, here we are sitting here now. Um, if, you, if you hadn't told me, I wouldn't know that Kimberly was a person with AIDS. I mean, she just looks like a nice looking lady to me. I mean, but, but people have this stigma that, that, that a person with AIDS is something you that, can that you're scared of and you can you pick, pick out. Pick and you, out can, in the crowd. you don't have a large A on your forehead. No, no, no. no. And uh, you know, it, it's just, um, I guess for us in, in the business here, it's become such a normal thing to know people with AIDS that, that maybe we're a little jaded to the fact that you know, it's, it's just such a normal thing. I mean, after the Tony Awards, when nobody said anything, somebody actually wrote in Newsday which is a, a Long Island newspaper, a New York newspaper. Well, why should they have said anything? I mean, what does AIDS have to do with the theater community? 
I mean, that's kind of like saying, what does water have to do with the ocean? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, Unfortunately, that, that is somewhat the case. I've often wondered why people have wanted to take her. As I always said, why would anyone want Nellie Olson's advice on a medical issue? I thought that was highly strange. Um, I was really pleased with Commitment to Life to see a lot of celebrities speaking out and showing up, and a lot of the people in the entertainment industry who really do things. We have some footage that was taken at Commitment to Life where I was able to speak to and interview a few people, and they were able to say something to our viewers. And I'd like to show that now, and this is some footage we got at Commitment to Life for some of the people who were there and spoke out. I'm Alison Arngram, and this is AIDS Vision. We're going to be at the AIDS Project Los Angeles 1991 Commitment to Life Awards. We will be backstage interviewing Bette Midler and many others. David Lee Roth, no less. Yes. Who knew? Yes. No, that was great. That was great, Alice. <laughs> there, there were many more than even that. That was who we could chase down on their way in. Yes. But I was really pleased with also um, a lot of the things that some of the people said to me uh, about people they had lost yes. and about how that their appearance at Commitment to Life was not the only thing that they were doing for AIDS. Yes. Celebrities, as we're saying, do have a power that they should or shouldn't have, but they seem to. Kimberly, how do you feel as someone with AIDS about celebrity and the entertainment industry's involvement and when celebrities speak out as these spokespeople? Is this really effective? What do you think it means? Extremely necessary. Uh, like, like you said, you know, they have a power and uh, if they're going to use it uh, to help me and my daughter, I'm thrilled and, uh, and I think it's very necessary because not a lot of people are going to listen to me, uh, and uh, they'll listen to someone who they recognize and uh, trust, and and so uh, I'm thrilled that there are a lot of people willing to do that. Do you feel um, that any of them are jumping on a bandwagon or cashing in, or do you feel the benefits outweigh that? Would you definitely the benefits outweigh the jumping on the bandwagon effect? I think. <laughs> yeah, and I also don't think it is very much that. I think. Um, just because of the way the AIDS crisis is perceived, I don't think people will jump on the bandwagon. I think if they're going to speak up, then they mean it. You know, I, I don't think it's like, um, it's very easy to say, oh, I'm going to raise money for cancer or the Heart Association. Um, but if you're going to talk about AIDS, I think you're, 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 you're taking that step, which unfortunately has some kind of a stigma, and um, I think you mean it if you're doing it. Uh, what bothers me, Allison, is uh, the Commitment to Life event was so wonderful. Um, and a lot of the political 
speeches that were made and stuff, you know, everybody cheering and, and everybody all in the right direction and the right thing. What bothers me always at those events is that Unfortunately, everyone who's there doesn't need to hear it. We all know that. And I wish there was some way to take people like George Bush and lock them in a room and make them see tapes of these events, you know? I'll get the rope. Let's yeah, okay. <laughs> but, you know, that's always been very frustrating to me that usually when you're at these wonderful events, everyone who's there knows already, you know? And, and that's why... That's why we're trying to do this with award shows. Um, you're reaching people who don't go to AIDS benefits either because they're not in that city or they can't afford to, or they, um, they're not people involved in the fight. And um, so it branches it out a little bit because, I mean, unfortunately, it is not a showbiz disease only. It is not a gay disease only. It, we're reaching, since it's the whole population, um, it, it's again, that's another thing that the celebrities will do when, when you see people um, you know, for, from Betty White to LeVar Burton, I mean, the whole gamut of the entertainment industry, I mean, it just, to me, is symbolic of that it can touch anybody of any sex or any race or any sexual persuasion or any uh, anything. That's part of what, you know, we're trying to say with this, I think. It's true. We, we do have an opportunity to take it to people who may not be listening. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I always say with this show, we, we reach people who are doing laps with the channel changer. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm glad that we are. And I know that a lot of people in the entertainment industry have to lose someone they know, as I did and as you have, mm -hmm. to become involved. And I'm interested to see what's going to happen now that we have some entertainers actually going public with their own diagnosis. Uh, the Brad Davis... Uh, at the Commitment to Life Awards, the conversation was quite heavy about Brad Davis, about what this meant, that he was unable to tell anyone, including close friends of his in the entertainment industry, that he was sick. Uh, do you think that this is going to have an impact on how people see AIDS, that this person going public? I hope so. I hope so, because, I mean, Brad, unfortunately, was, was one isolated case of this. I think this is much more widespread than anybody knows. Um, my friend who I lost uh, before the uh, Emmys, his, his name was Jeffrey Schistler. He was a lighting designer. And he went through the same thing on a lesser scale. Um, he hardly told anybody and because he was afraid he wouldn't get work and he wanted to keep working and he needed to keep working and there was no reason he shouldn't keep working. And um, it got to the point where he was so worried about people finding out that he was in denial. And it got to the point where I think it was obvious that he was sick and he thought that people didn't know because mm. he didn't want them to know. But he wanted to keep working. He didn't, even if he could afford it, he didn't want to sit around and, 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 and watch TV for the rest of his life. Um, he, he's creative. He needed to create. I'm also very concerned about the people who, who can't tell their friends who are denied support. Have you been through a phase where you did not tell anyone you knew, where you denied well, yourself first support? first of all, it's the doctors, number one, when you first find out, that tell you, don't tell anyone. So that's where we come from. Is Why do they tell you that? Because they're afraid that you're gonna, your house is gonna get burned down or something like that. And so they, you know, my doctor said, do not tell anyone. Don't tell your mother. You know, don't tell your your relatives, your friends. Don't tell anyone. I said that's ridiculous. You know, this is my life. I'm fighting for my life and my daughter's life, and it's going to be obvious. I'm a very emotional person. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to keep quiet about it. But first of all, the doctors tell you that. So that's where that, it's not only a feeling you get from people around you, it's the doctors tell you don't tell anyone, or someone who uh, you go to to get your test results back from anonymously, they'll, they'll tell you, you know, that this is extremely confidential. And, well, do you think then there are also, obviously, then people who, not just celebrities who are afraid of losing their career, but average people who are not telling their own families because of this and are isolating themselves? Is this oh, something definitely. you're seeing a lot of? And like he was saying, I felt so bad to, to see that what you were saying, that he went into so much denial. He probably um, didn't get a lot of the help he needed. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. It, and... It was sad, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't hiding, it, it wasn't ashamed of having it, it wasn't anything like that, it was just that no one will hire me, right. and, and, and no, that's a very scary thing, I mean, especially then, when, when um, with, with the healthcare situation the way it is, you certainly can't stop working then, if, if you're not independently wealthy, which I don't think any of us are. So. <laughs> and even if you are, AIDS is a little expensive. Yeah, it's, it's, a, little, <laughs> yeah, it's a little expensive, and then it reached us, um, you know, you know I, I produce $100,000 Pyramid, you know that, um, we lost our associate producer. Um, to AIDS, and um, 
it's been a lot of the celebrities. Um, I made a deal with my uh, my executive producer um, that I couldn't ask anybody to wear a ribbon because that's putting a guest in an uncomfortable situation. But if anyone asks me what is that red ribbon and can I wear one, then that would be fine. And so a lot of the celebrities have worn them on Pyramid, which is yet another group that we're reaching out there. Um, you know, so I just think the more different, diverse places that people can see them. And um, what we're building up to, you know, December 1st of this year is World AIDS Day. And um, what, what they would want, what Tom Viola, who's the man at Equity Fights AIDS, who founded this, um, he said, I, I want all of America to be wearing them by December 1st. And at least that show of solidarity or, or, or whatever. I mean, I'm, my hope is by the next December 1st, we can, well, we can have a ribbon burning party because <laughs> it's over. I mean, that's what I really want. Well, you'll have me, all my friends, wearing them. That's that's easy enough. The ribbons, I noticed it's, it's a nice ribbon. Um, you gave me this for free. I haven't seen anyone purchase them. Who pays for this, and where do you get the money? Well, um, so far the ribbons you've seen on all the award shows and everything have been paid for by Equity Fights AIDS. Um, you know, they just went to a mass-producing ribbon company. Um, but it's important. They do want everyone to know that there's no such thing as an official ribbon. And people are encouraged to make their own. I mean, take a piece of red ribbon, cut it, and stick a pin through it, and that's all there is to it. Um, now, as, as organizations um, are starting to approach us or me, I mean, thanks to APLA and um, people who are spreading the word for us, um, uh, they're buying them. They're, you know, they're reimbursing Equity Fights AIDS. They're, but I mean, really, if you just have, you can get a committee of five to sit there for a couple of hours and cut ribbons and stick in a pin. I mean, it costs nothing. You know, it, it's... Um, and, but it's important to know that there is nothing official about these. I mean, they're kind of fancy and finished off. So if I lose this, I can go make a new one. That, I can yes. make In fact, the wardrobe one of the pyramid, Melanie <laughs> McGowan, has been making them and always keeps them on her wardrobe card, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. So. What would you like to see celebrities do for AIDS? What could people in the entertainment industry who have this high profile really do that would make a difference? What should we be saying? Kimberly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, um, oh, I don't need to cut in on you. No, go ahead. You want to go next? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important thing that needs to be gotten across is that it's an every man's disease. And, you know, it's not about any specific group of people. Yes, there are groups of people that are at higher risk, but that it's about everybody. There, there was a documentary on PBS, I think called Absolutely Positive or something mm -hmm. like that, where they showed you know, the whole cross-section of the population. And the most moving part of it for me was there was this, uh, this woman um, who uh, in her early days was shooting drugs and cleaned her act up like 10 years ago and had a family. And now it came back to haunt her. And she's infected from that activity 10 years ago and her child is infected and, and that one moved me almost more than anything because it's like you're being punished for, for your youth or, 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 you know, or whatever. So I think the more celebrities of varied types that can be out there supporting and saying, you know, give money, do something, um, go work with people, I mean more than giving money even, uh, we need people to care for people with AIDS who have perhaps been abandoned by their families or, or, or whatever. Uh, and there's so many places to volunteer. And I think if the celebrities show up and volunteer places, then that might inspire us regular folks to show up and volunteer places. Do you feel that that would work, Kimberly? I, I think so. I mean, definitely that's the message that I, I give across is that uh, it can happen to you, you know, it can be anyone. And so um, that's a good point is to not just have a certain type of celebrity uh, portray, you know, their support. Um, that's the main message that, that I give is that uh, you can't tell who has it and, uh, and it could be yourself and you don't know it. So um, the celebrities, um, need to portray that that as well and like he said volunteering is a big part and there have also been some some tv shows have done some incredible work i think in spreading the word i mean the one that comes to mind is la law has done such mm -hmm. wonderful storyline about a lawyer you know with aids and and fighting uh because his insurance wouldn't pay yeah. for experimental, experimental drugs and yeah. yeah it was a wonderful episode and of course on la law he won i mean now in fact 
But if that in real life could even inspire one <laughs> person on a jury to go that way, I think they've accomplished something major. You know? Do you think there, there, there is a lack? I mean, we're starting now to see more, but do you think there needs to be more done in television and film about AIDS, making it more accessible to people? Yes, I do. I, I definitely do. Uh, uh, not only on this type of, of talk show thing, but I, I think incorporating it into storylines is very important because again, it, then it just it, it points out that the, the it's such a regular thing. It's there. I know the, uh, life goes on. The Patty Lapone show. Mm -hmm. They're doing a storyline about AIDS this year in, in the high school, um, where one of the students, it turns out, has AIDS. And I mean, I think that's very important. I mean, I don't know how it's going to turn out or, or what the gist of their what they're doing is, but just the fact that they're dealing with yes, high school students have AIDS, and and. Well, we yeah, finally yeah. had an after-school special, yeah. which is about teenagers with AIDS. Uh -huh. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Uh, right. How can people get involved with the Ribbon Project if they want a ribbon, they want to get involved, they want to start doing something, getting their friends? Well, they can certainly, you know, they can get in touch with me, I guess, through your through your show. There right, was, through AIDS Project. Your number mm -hmm. at the, through APLA, AIDS Project Los Angeles. <laughs> um, uh, but also, I mean, w without getting involved with me or you or anybody else, you, um, I, I would love to see people sit down in their community make the ribbons and distribute them. I mean, um, to, to a PTA or, or to, a, to a, any kind of club or, or to uh, anything. And just then, because there's something about when, I, I just decided after losing um, my, my two friends a couple of months ago and, and all the other people that I know that I'm not taking it off until this is over. I mean, it used to just be I'll wear it at a special event or where somebody might see it, but I just wear it all the time now. And I find that either people will say to me, what's the ribbon for? and then sometimes be sorry they asked, or, or, or mm -hmm. sometimes say, oh, that's wonderful, and, and I'll give them one. Um, or sometimes look, and you can see they don't want to ask because they don't want to know. Well, you know? I'm going to wrap this up, and I'd just like to say yeah. that I'm Alison Arngerman. I was on TV, and I'm not taking my ribbon off. <laughs> and uh, ever since I lost my friend Steve Tracy, who was on Little House in the Prairie, I have been involved with AIDS, and I volunteer. And I encourage anyone out there who's a celebrity or not a celebrity to please volunteer, please get involved, help with education, help with people who are sick, and wear your red ribbons. Thank you. This has been AIDS Vision. <laughs>